For this video, I'd like to continue our discussion about multiplying binomials, but this time I'd like to focus specifically on these two special products. And this first one you'll find out is called a difference of squares or a difference of two squares. And you'll see why it's called that shortly. And the second one down here, this is a perfect square of this binomial. And essentially these two situations arise often. So it's worth taking a closer look at their special features. So let's start with this first one, which I called a difference of two squares. And we're essentially just gonna multiply it out. And we can use the FOIL method here. So remember the FOIL method, we just start by multiplying the first one. So that's the X and the X, we get X squared there. And then we'll multiply the outer terms. So that's the X and the minus two. So we get minus two X. And from there, we'll go to the inner terms. So that's the plus two and the positive X. We get plus two X. And finally, then we go to the last terms, which would be the plus two and the minus two. So we get minus four. And what you see here is that these middle terms, the minus two X and the plus two X are essentially gonna cancel each other out. So that what you're left with is just X squared minus four. Or another way to look at that is that this is the same thing as x squared minus two squared. And this is the reason why we call it a difference of two squares. Because you have a difference, we're subtracting, difference is the word for subtraction, and we have these two numbers squared. So that's why we call it a difference of two squares. But the main theme is that if you have x plus something and then x minus that same number, then these middle terms are gonna cancel out. And basically, as long as this first term is the same in both of them, and as long as you're adding or subtracting the same term in both of them, you'll always get this scenario. So another example of this would be something like 2x minus five times 2x plus five you have this case where you have the same term starting out and then you're subtracting five and you're adding five. So essentially when we multiply this out, you should expect to see this exact same scenario happen where the middle terms are gonna cancel each other out. So let's multiply this out. And again, we're gonna use that FOIL method. So we get two X times two X for the first terms. So that's four X squared. And then we get two X times positive five, which is plus 10 X. And then we have minus five times two X, which is minus 10 X. And then you have minus five times positive five, which is minus 25. And again, you can see these middle terms are gonna cancel each other out. So that we end up with four X squared minus 25, or you can think of this as two X squared minus five squared. So again, we have this difference of two squares, where it's this term squared minus this term here squared. So essentially we can generalize a pattern here where let's say we have 5x plus eight times 5x minus eight. Notice that in this previous problem that we had two x and minus five and that when we got our solution we had two x squared minus five squared. So based off this pattern, our answer should be five x squared minus eight squared or if we multiply this out, 25x squared minus 64. And if you multiply this out with the FOIL method, you can see that that's true. Since if we do the first ones, we get 25x squared, and the outer terms would be 5x and minus eight, so that's minus 40x. The inner terms is plus eight and 5x, which is plus 40x. And then we have plus eight times minus eight, which is minus 64. And again, you can see that these middle terms cancel each other out and we do get the solution that we thought we'd get based off that pattern. So let me just show you one more. So if you have something like 16x plus 12 times 16x minus 12, we have this situation where we're gonna get a difference of two squares. And we know it's just this first one, 16x squared minus the second one, 12 squared. And if you want, you can actually multiply this out and you get 256x squared minus 144. So with that in mind, now let's talk about the second special binomial where we have a perfect square. 
And essentially, that would be something like x minus 3 squared. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see in algebra is that students will essentially write this as x squared minus 3 squared. They'll just square each of these numbers. But this is not correct. Like I said, this is one of the biggest mistakes that you see in elementary algebra. But you essentially have to remember what it means to square something. So if I have the number 3 squared, this is just take this number and multiply it this many times. So 3 times 3. So in this case, we have this whole expression and we want to multiply it this many times. So we're going to rewrite this as x minus 3 times x minus 3. Let me just rewrite that a little neater. And from here, we can use the FOIL method. So we're going to multiply the first terms together. So we get x squared and then the outer would be minus 3 times x or minus 3x. The inner is minus 3 times x or minus 3x. And then we have minus 3 times minus 3 for our last ones, which would be positive 9. And when we simplify this, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So the main difficulty with solving these types of problems is that you have to remember what it means to square something. And you have to avoid this very common mistake that many students make. So let's look through a couple more examples. Let's say we had 2x plus 6, and we square that. So first, we're going to rewrite this as 2x plus 6 multiplied by itself, rather than making the mistake of saying this is 4x squared plus 36, since it is definitely not that. Essentially, when you write it like this, you lose the middle terms involving the x. And if it helps, remember, you can always use an area model with these types of problems, where well, I guess I should write this more as a square since it's going to be the same side on each side. So we have 2x plus 6 here, and we have 2x plus 6 here. And with the area model, you're essentially splitting the square up into multiple parts. So for instance, we can split this top side up between 2x and 6. So essentially that this side length is 6, and this side length is 2x. And since we don't know what x is, you kind of have to guess here. But let's just say it splits it here. And this could be completely wrong, because x could be something bigger than 3, and therefore this side would be longer than this. But since we don't know, we'll just estimate. And the same thing for this other side length, since it's the exact same. And then with the area model, you can just multiply, essentially, the side lengths for each of these individual rectangles. So you'd get 4x squared, you'd get 12x here, 12x here, and you get 36 there. And then when you combine them, you get 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. Or you can just use the FOIL method, which would get you the same answer. Since the first ones give us 4x squared, then the outer ones give us 12x. The inner ones also give us 12x. And the last ones are going to give us 36. And when we combine these middle two terms, we do end up with this answer down here, this 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. And let's look at a very general case. So let's look at a plus b squared. So this will essentially be for any two numbers, a and b. So this is a plus b times a plus b. And we're going to use the FOIL method. And the first ones will give us a squared. And then we get the outer ones, which would be a times b plus the inner ones, which are the same thing, a times b, and then plus the last ones, which is b squared. And when we combine this, we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So this is kind of the general solution for any perfect square binomial. And we can apply this general idea to a specific problem. Let's say we had x plus 9. And so essentially, a is x. In this case, you get x squared plus 2x times b, but b is 9. So we get 2 times x times 9, or 18x, and plus b squared, which is 9 squared. So that's 81. So this is a quick way to know what a perfect square binomial would actually multiply out to. You can essentially just match it up to this general formula here.